and welcome to the Lumix Festival for Young Visual Journalism. My name is Gabriela Jaskula and it's my pleasure to present the Lumix Festival Awards in 2020. Lumix is rich in creativity. A thousand works were given, 50 picture series, 18 digital storytelling works were nominated and 12 were found for the external exhibition New Perspectives. But although Lumix is a serious and well-established competition, it still remains young. Don't worry. Lumix is still striking. Lumix often holds surprising perspectives and views of the seemingly normal world. And on the other side, the young photographers persevere wisely and quietly amidst the disgraces and catastrophes of our modern world. Lumix is firmly established in the city of Hanover, Lower Saxony in Germany, and the city's well-known and traditional newspaper is open to its innovating power. So the first award to be handed over today is the Behatz Audience Award, donated with 1,000 euros in the picture series or digital storytelling. Pardon? Did I say hand it over? Slowly, slowly, we all get used to the challenges of Corona time, but nevertheless, it wasn't easy for Lumix organizers to find a fitting and dignified way to replace the personal handing over the prizes. Let's see how it works today. The culture critics of Hannover Allgemeine Zeitung is Uwe Janssen. Let's go ahead, Uwe, who is the winner of the Hearts Audience Award. And I proudly present that this year Lumix Festival 2020 Hatz Publikum Spice, the Audience Award of this very special Corona Forced edition of the Lumix Festival. Third place, Shirin Abedi and the story May I Have the Dance. Second place, Gabriele Cicconi and his story The Wretched and the Earth. And the winner is Patricia Kufus and her story Nicht müde werden. Congratulations! Nicht müde werden is a story about healthcare workers in Germany and their real work. No stock photos, real work with real people under real physical and mental conditions. I think this is a wonderful choice because it builds a bridge. Uh, we live in special times now, but we don't have any um, coronavirus stories at the competition. Uh, for the simple reason that the, the deadline for the photographers to apply to the competition to send in their works was pre-corona in January, so we don't have it. And this one builds a bridge uh, because it puts a light on the healthcare workers, the conditions for them to work now in the coronavirus times are much more harder. And this work refers to them and builds a relation to the times we live in now. So, once again, congratulations, Patricia, to the HAZ Publikums Preis. And hopefully we all meet at the Lumix Festival, the 8th Lumix Festival in 2022, in Hanover at the Expo Plaza. Bye-bye. An honorable mention is one of the best possibilities to win, I would say. The prize gives you a perspective, but it will not turn into a burden which may be too high. It simply says, well done, go on. In our case, go on Michele Spatari, who presents Rising Water. Michele Spatari is based in Johannesburg, South Africa, where he normally works for a news agency, AFP. Congratulations, Michele. Digital Storytelling Award, honorable mention, Michele Spatari, Rising Water. <laughs> wow, thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy. <laughs> cool. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You have done a wonderful job producing Rising Water. Your visual language is well chosen for your set, a bathroom for the poor in your city. You have developed a personal film language and the use of all your professional instruments except the persons you're filming. We need no ideologists as journalists or journalists who patronize, but open eyes and feelings for the others and then telling their stories. Michele, 
You have done this. Thanks a lot and congratulations. And there's a second honorable mention. It goes to the digital storytelling of Patrick da Silva Steta and Mats Nuberg Stustad, Chasing Climate Change. It is a Brazilian Norwegian corporation proving in 100 photographs something is happening in Norway and it is disquieting. It took one year to document the silent change of the climate up in the north. That's, that's yours. Ah, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Something is happening. It's happening all over the world, slowly, almost imperceptibly. Two young journalists have taken a closer look at what is happening. In a visual report, clearly structured and well balanced between scientific facts and the story, they show us the ecological, economic and personal catastrophes of climate change that can already be observed in their home country. Not in 50 years, not in 100 years, but right now. The jury would have never thought that the climate change in Norway would interest us so much. Thank you very much and congratulations. I'm glad to welcome now Professor Karen Fromm. She is head of the Lumix Festival together with Lars Bauernschmidt. Hello, Karen. Welcome here. Hello, Gabriela. The climate change and arm exhibitions, corona crisis and exploited people everywhere. Is Lumix still political and tremendously idealistic? It definitely is still political and I think it is more than ever political because for us the main idea behind the festival is to ask this question how we should find perspectives for visual journalism in the future. And we focus on this question, how must this visual journalism of the future develop in order to become socially, culturally and politically effective. So behind all what we do is the idea how to make images matter. And I think this is not only the idea of our concept about the festival, I can see that in many different of the stories that are part of the competition because they focus on all the important conflict areas all over the world, but they do this and they also focus on many other different stories that may, maybe have not been told before. So there's this idea behind it to show what is going on and also to think about how can I tell this and also to reflect on the own way of storytelling different perspectives, uh, different angles. Do you see in the majority of the young photographers something like a general tendency, formal, technically, or talking about the contents? Yeah, I think there are some tendencies. I think there, there definitely is the tendency um, to um, go away or to get away from the idea of finding single images that tell a whole story. It's the idea that to tell the complex stories that are important for our world right now, to tell it from different angles and maybe also to include in one story um, these different techniques. So I see a great potential in um, all the works that work with multimedia, transmedia stories mm -hmm. and this are the stories, of course, that are part of the Digital Storytelling Award, but I can see it also in, in the other stories that are part of the picture, picture series competition, because many of them not only consist out of these single images, but they include photo books. Sometimes they also work on an interactive website, sort of, so it's more focusing on different platforms and maybe also finding um, or creating own ways to um, get the stories published. Mm -hmm. In former times we had the unique, the one and single photography. Now we have more and more storytelling, digital storytelling and photographs and series, multimedia. But can that be the solution for everything? Storytelling? Um, no, definitely not the solution for everything. I think um, it's one idea that, um, that we, or we use this word because uh, somehow we know now that it's not the idea of the single image that works 
and that the single image always have a danger because, of course, whenever you make a picture, you also talk about power relations. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of diversification helps to work against this. But uh, actually, I'm sometimes not so convinced about this um, word, storytelling, mm -hmm. because somehow it also gives you an idea. It's this story, it has a beginning, a climax, and an ending. So it might also yeah, make things easier, or it makes things look easier than they actually are. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. As you just heard, the young photographers have serious concerns and are very often driven by their moral and ethical convictions. So the partnership of the Umweltdruckerei, an ecological print company, is very, very fitting for the festival. Its 1,000 euro award goes to Gabriele Cecconi. The photo series spotlights one group of forgotten people and their disaster in the world the Rohingya, who had to flee from their home Myanmar to Bangladesh. It has been a catastrophe to them and to the environment. Yes. You um, won the prize for the Sustainability Award. Thank you so much. It's a very nice news. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a bad moment, but uh, sometimes uh, it's, it's good to have good news. Chikoni's profound series of photos was generated in one of the world's largest refugee camps in Bangladesh. His images document the daily lives of the Rohingya, the Muslim minority that fled Myanmar in August 2017. In his work, Chikoni demonstrates empathy, but avoids cheap melodrama. That's what makes his work stand out from the many other stories about displacement. The way Giacconi connects two crises in one story is masterful, both aesthetically and journalistically. Each of Giacconi's photographs makes a strong statement on its own. He masterfully links contrast such as lightness and concentration, struggle and daily life, death and survival. He demonstrates that humans are part of nature. People can flee, yes, but only a healthy environment will allow them, and us at the end, to survive in the long term. The refugee crisis is also a crisis of the ecosystem. Giacconi's work opens our eyes to that unavoidable link. He shows us, literally, the whole picture. And the most crucial message of his work is the importance of sustainability. Another photographer, another border. Southern border, that's the seemingly harmless title of another thought-provoking series that shows the problems, the cruelty, and the individual disasters of the US-American border to Mexico. Too well known, you think? See the pictures of Jeffrey Gilmar, the winner of the Lammerhuber Photo Award, endowed with 1,000 euros. You won the um, Lama Huber Photo Award. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Hanover. After 43 minutes and 49 seconds of this year's jury meeting, the work of Geoffrey Guimar came up, and by chance, I was first in line to give a statement. I said, I make a long story short, this is my winner. A few seconds later, Maris Barbara Staus followed up. For me too, the images are unbelievably good. Next was Andreas Trampe. I agree, he said. I think this is the best of all works submitted. Well, this was it. There was no more discussion. For reaching the US, these migrants put at risk all they are and have. Mostly they lose. They lose their money, their dignity, and sometimes even their lives, reports Geoffrey. What he shows us in his work, Thought and Border, is top level photojournalism the way I love it. He transforms moments of daily struggle into emotion. His photographs 
are no longer facts only, but opinions. The purpose of this photograph is to make visible what we see. Karin Fromm and Lars Bauernschmidt, the two professors who are responsible from this year on for the Lumix Photo Award, will get a little bit sentimental now because it's one of their students who is going to be decorated with the F3 Freiraum Award for Photography, donated with 1,000 euros. Shirin Abedi, born in Tehran, has been living most of her young life in Germany, but Shirin herself would say, that she's used to living between two worlds. In 2014, she went back to Iran to get a deeper understanding of her motherland's culture. Did anyone ask her there, may I have this dance? The dance took her to the prize. Congratulations, Shirin. Und zwar ist es so, dass du nicht den Hauptpreis, aber einen der Preise des Lumix Festivals gewonnen hast. Das ist toll, oder? Wie kommt das? Richtig geil, richtig geil. In her series May I Have This Dance, the photographer Shirin Abedi portrays young women who belong to a ballet group in Tehran, Iran. Dancing in Iran, that is resistance, says dancer and choreographer Mojan Hashemian. Dancers are exposed to reprisals and persecution. Already approved pieces are cancelled, the lights are turned off during the performances, and too much public attention can lead to arrests. The series May I Have This Dance is thus not only about a classical dance, about ballet. It takes us into the lives of young women in Tehran in an impressive way. It shows us their intrepid struggle for a free, emancipated life and documents the longing of an entire generation that is demanding social change. Congratulations, Shirin Abedi. 10 days, 10 guiding issues live talks, podcasts, an exhibition on bicycle wheels, and above all, the digital exhibition and the awards. How is life with the Lumix Festival? The planning, the development, and the festival until now. The question goes to two students, to Teresa Halbreiter and Konstantin Rimpel. Welcome. How is life with the Lumix Festival, Teresa? I think Everybody is very, very busy right now, um, sitting in front of the computer all day long and um, planning and um, calling so many different people. Uh, but it is still fun. So my, my day is very long right now and uh, especially um, the last days are very, very uh, long. You said busy. What is your task? What are you doing concretely? Right now I'm um, working on the website, so my main task right now is to um, fulfill everything. I did a lot of text work in the beginning and um, all the text needs to be included in the website, so this is what I'm doing right now and um, uh, also all the pictures need to be uh, included and the videos and everything. Um, so this is my main task right now, but mm -hmm. uh, we do have all the um, topic, the daily topics. So I'm also part of uh, two teams um, for the photo book day and for the equality day. So this is a lot of work too. So I, I yes. um, organize uh, with my team members um, the program for these days also. I understand it's a lot of work, Konstantin. Which role? does Lumix play in your studies? Is it just an exhibition, an adventure? Do you work on for it? How is it? What role does Lumix play in your study? For me personally, it's been a long journey, so to speak, because 
Um, this is my third Lumix festival. I'm it's uh, your third. Working on, yeah. It's You're a veteran. I, I started in <laughs> 2016 as a part of the printing team because I wanted to learn how to print like gallery quality pictures. And um, I thought it would help myself uh, as a photographer as well. And uh, 2018, I was part of the core organizing team. And uh, yeah, for 2020, I was uh, back sitting in the office um, planning for all the stuff we had planned. And now uh, I'm sitting in front of my computer as well <laughs> and uh, organizing uh, live talks and talking to lecturers um, about their uh, schedules, how we can fit everything in 10 days, all the uh, like now it's a massive amount of content uh, we have to develop and um, distribute somehow. Mm. We're talking about visual journalism, but on the other hand, there's art, art photography. What would you say? What are your preferences? Oh, um, that is a hard question to answer. I think um, I, I, I can't really say. Um, I think. Uh, both sides are very important and um, also for the festival um, this is also the main reason maybe why we changed the name to visual journalism so um, everything the industry is um, becoming more and more open and um, uh, photojournalism uh, or uh, journalistic content um, is presented in a new way. So there are uh, different forms of presentation and I think artistic ways are getting more and more common and popular and I like it how it is um, uh, and how it, um, how, how the how forms of mm -hmm. uh, presentation are changing and mm -hmm. um, so this is why I couldn't really decide um, for arts or journalistic uh, photography. Uh, I like the mixture of it. Mm -hmm. Is it all storytelling until now? I think it's one of the tendencies you can see everywhere, Konstantin. Do you see it as well? All storytelling in terms of photography, visual arts and documentary. It's all everybody tells longer stories. The series is one of the tendencies. We have this tendency in the Lumix Festival for a long time mm -hmm. because um, we are not fixed on one year of production like other awards maybe or other festivals that are uh, happening every year. So um, they just accept work from that special year or from that year. And um, so we have always had stories that were developed in a longer period of time. and stories that were more in-depth maybe mm -hmm. on their topics than other stories because the, the photographers could spend basically more time with their particip uh, with their uh, protagonists and um, just become part of their life and their story as well and um, that's why I like the the stories that are shown at the Lumix festival that much because it's it's not just the run and gun <laughs> daily news photography, um, but it's more um, conversation, it's more discussions, it's more mm -hmm. um, in depth. Yeah. Talking about interaction, you said conversations and dialogue. You have worked so hard for this festival, but now you cannot meet the real artists. How is it for you to replace the direct contact to photographers? on a digital level now. How is it? It's difficult because the interaction and the when you have worked for so many months on, on the festival and um, everybody's coming to Hanover and meeting in person, that's like a, uh, a reveal of the faces and you now have a face for everybody. That's, that's one of the best moments for the whole festival and that's not happening this year, unfortunately. But um, I've had talks with photographers, video calls, where you could somehow have the same thing going, but not really. But <laughs> it's also it's, it's, um, just 
nice to talk to people in person. And it's, it's different this year, and I hope we can um, create something that's um, as appealing as a in-person meeting. Yeah. As appealing and as moving. What are your wishes for Lumix future, Teresa? Um, my wishes are that uh, all our work we are doing right now um, will be part of the next festival too and um, all new festivals. I think it's uh, a big chance what are we doing right now. It is still frustrating that, uh, as Constantine said, we don't get to see everybody and uh, connect um, at the Expo Plaza. Uh, but I think, as I said, it's a big chan chance for um, the new festivals to keep this uh, digital form for upcoming uh, events and uh, be even more international. And um, yeah, I think it's a, a, a big opportunity for the Lumix Festival to, to include this digital form for further events. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have and to make this is what I wish, that it, uh, that it is worth it to do all this work, actually. Yeah, maybe you can have a mixture in the future, yeah. like having a uh, exhibition at the Expo Plaza and the, the analog festival going, but still have a strong digital um, website or, or other programs like our podcast or something for the future exactly. to, to have more content for people that can't make it to Hanover. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a, something to think about for the future. Yeah. Let's learn from the crisis. Thank you so much <laughs> for this interview and all the very best for both Thank of you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. If we were in a cinema right now, maybe a waiter would come in and offer some ice cream or even champagne. Imagine it would get dark again. Atmospheric music would start. And yes, here they are the main awards of the Lumix Festival in 2020. And the surprise is, we are staying at home. I mean, we are staying at Hanover University of Applied Science and Arts. The Lumix Digital Storytelling Award, donated by Panasonic and worth 5,000 euros, goes to Katharina Neuhaus and Helena Mannhatzberger. Helena and Katharina are interested in gender and identity questions. Both go very far for the answers, as you can see in an ultra slut, wherein a transsexual protagonist tries to overcome her depression through lust and pain. Helena and Katharina both are students here in Hanover. Congratulations. Will you see Wow! <lacht> Fuck! Das ist eurer. Wie geil! Damit hätte ich überhaupt nie gerechnet. Alter! Wow! Geil! Cool, 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 cool. Happy! Das ist ja Wahnsinn! Wow! The filmmakers use. Um the medium in its best way, I would say. They are combining beautifully shot photography and film and they let the protagonist tell her own story. Um, this way they give um, the viewer very deep insight in trans life and BDSM. They tell the story with great openness and they don't fall back into stereotypical narratives, which makes this, it very refreshing to watch. The topic, the storyline, the choice of medium, the tone, and the awareness of the filmmakers of their own role as storytellers, all that comes together um, to make Ultraslut the winner of the Lumix Digital Storytelling Award. Dear ladies and gentlemen, does anyone have an envelope for me? Now we get right to the core of the matter, which is the Nobel Lumix Photo Award 2020, donated with 5,000 euros. And of course, it deals with another crisis, political this time. But crisis? What crisis? Cynical people would state 
when they talk about Venezuela. The crisis, so it seems, is constant there. Instability, maybe, is the only kind of stability in the South American country, which could be rich because of its mineral resources. In this shattered country, the focus rarely is on women and even less on women in prison. The winner of the Lumix Photo Award 2020 was able to conduct research in a women's prison in Caracas, Venezuela. The chaos and inhumanness of the conditions the prisoners have to live in there is contrasted in formerly strict but vivid photographs. See some impressions of the 2020 Lumix Photo Award winner, see Anna Maria Arevalo Gosen and her eternal days, Dias Eternos. Is that for me? That's for you, actually. No way! Because you won the main prize. That's amazing! That's so cool! Thank you so much! Wow! Cool! <laughs> So you yes. didn't expect it? No, not at all. There are so many and so many good ones. And I, I don't know, it's, it's pretty amazing. There are so many good people, uh, you know, I didn't, no, not at all. <laughs> Photography reaches and affects us in many different ways. Sometimes it's the idea and the visual concept that uh, appeals to us. And then other times, it's the beauty of the moments and the perfection of the composition that uh, moves us. And then there are those stories where it's the photographer's access and the brutal honesty of the images that hits you right in the stomach. Anna Maria's story about the preventive detention centers in Venezuela is one of those stories. She has documented the life in various prisons in Venezuela, and she focused on the consequences of women in a country in economic crisis. The images are rough and honest, and as a viewer, you feel that you're right in the center of the women's lives. Through both images and text, Anna Maria tells about these women, and the number of pictures and the use of the women's personal stories is a strong document created by a photographer with great empathy. We are presented with heartbreaking stories and the work creates understanding and it calls for action. On behalf of the jury, a huge congratulations to you, Anna Maria, with the Lumix Photo Award. Thank you. Congratulations again to all the winners of the 2020 Lumix Festival Awards but congratulations as well to all the organizers, planners, realizers and appreciators of the Lumix Festival. Many thanks to all the experts and their vivid laudatory words. Thanks to the patient and passionate jury members. Thanks to all of you who donated our awards, who stayed loyal in difficult times. And last but not least, Thanks to all the students who very often behind the scenes have made this event possible. I have to correct myself. It's not an event, it's a progress. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the Lumix Festival will close soon, but it will reopen in 2022. Hopefully we will be all together again then, and hopefully we will be all witnesses of the creative and meaningful progress of young visual journalism in the world and in Hanover, Lower Saxony, Germany. Bye-bye, hasta la próxima, and stay conscious. Mm -hmm.